Hi there, this is Morgan with Morgan Burke's Photography and Product Shop, and today I'm going to show you a few of my favorite ways to make black and white images pop. So the first thing I'm going to do is just convert this image to black and white, and I'm going to do that by using the cardigan action, and you can find this action in the Autumn Freebie Set. It's um, available on my website, morganburks.com, under the Freebie section. So I'm just going to hit play on this action, and then this one actually has a matte effect already inside of it. Um, so that's kind of why I ran it, so I can just do um, a couple quick tweaks and then I'll be finished. Uh, so once I've ran the action that I want to run, or once you've converted your image to black and white, your favorite way, um, I'm then going to go to Control Alt Shift E. So it's a keyboard shortcut that merges your layers into one top layer. That way you don't lose your work um, and you don't have to flatten your photo, um, but you can achieve the same effect. So again, that's Control Alt Shift E, or if you're on a Mac, it's Command Option Shift E. Um, so once that's done, this layer is automatically selected, which is perfect because then I'm going to go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and I'm using Photoshop CC, so we have that Camera Raw Filter. If you don't, you can save your photo and reopen it into Photoshop by going to File, Open As, um, and then selecting Camera Raw as your file type. So it's a few more steps, um, but if you're using Photoshop CC, you'll have no problem finding it under the Filters tab. Okay, so once this photo pulls up into the ACR window, I'm just going to grab the clarity slider and drag it all the way over to 100. Um, depending on what photo you're working on, you may not want it at 100% strength. Um, but in this case, I really like the way it works with this photo. Um, the higher the clarity is, the more of their expressions I can kind of see and the details that are pulled out of that backlighting. Um, and I also like the way it plays with the texture of their clothing since their expressions and their skin is not really a focal point of this photo. It's more um, the sort of the way they're touching and their bodies are part of um, the main focal point. So I think adding the texture to the clothing really works here. Um, so anyway, I added that at 100 and then I'm just going to hit OK and it'll pull that adjustment right up onto that layer. So what you can do is actually adjust the opacity here if you wanted to turn that down, um, or you can turn it on and off and just see the difference in the effect, how much texture is pulled through, and contrast actually. Um, if you wanted to, if you didn't like the way this adjustment played with the skin, um, you can add a layer mask, and then with a black brush, you can paint, sorry, I'm gonna just make my brush bigger here, I'm just gonna do that with the, um, the right bracket key, on my keyboard, um, you could actually paint this effect off of anywhere you didn't want it. Um, in this case, I like it on everything, but that's an option for you if um, there's just a few spots on the photo that you would prefer it not be added to. Okay, so once that's done, this you honestly could stop here. Um, I really like adding clarity over whatever my method of black and white conversion is, um, but I'm gonna take it a step further here and just show you another way you can adjust your photo. Um, so one way to do it is, um, since this photo is backlit, I wanna play with the um, idea of making the photo a little bit darker and a little bit moodier to sort of play up the emotion going on in the photo. Um, so one way to do that, you could just grab a levels layer, um, and I did that by hitting the little half black, half white circle and then selecting levels from the flyout menu. Um, once that uh, layer pops up, you actually don't even have to make any adjustments. You could here by dragging these sliders, um, but just changing it from normal blend mode to multiply blend mode will give it sort of that dark moody effect, um, So that which is pretty cool. So I'm just going to delete that and I'm going to show you an alternative way. Um, so another way to do it would be to grab that same half black, half white circle and just grab a brightness contrast layer instead. And then this way, I feel like with a black and white photo, Aside from the brightness and the contrast and maybe that clarity that we already added, there's not really much else I like to do with the photo. Um, so I'm like usually a brightness contrast layer is where I go. Um, so here I could add more brightness if I wanted it to be brighter. I could, um, or I'm sorry, add more contrast if I wanted there to be more contrast or lower it if I thought that um, it was a little bit too contrasty, whatever your preference is. Um, and then what you can do, I'm gonna boost the contrast here. Um, what you can do is you can also adjust the brightness. So if you wanted it to be brighter, you can. But in this case, I really want to drag that brightness down a little bit and increase, um, again, like I said, that moody sort of darkness to this photo. So there is how I did that. Um, if you wanted to, you can play around with adding matte effects. I actually have a, a video tutorial that shows you how to do your own black and white conversion. Um, and I've got a tutorial that shows you matte effects. So here, your choices of how you edit your image 
are really endless. In this case, I would probably stop here, um, but I will show you really quick just how to add a fun matte effect if you um, if you don't have that cardigan action that already has it in there for you. Um, so again, same little adjustment button, that half black, half white circle. And in this case, I'm just gonna grab a solid color layer. Now here, you have full control over what color you choose. I like to grab um, about a three quarter tone gray. So about three fourths of the way from white to black. Um, it's a little bit past halfway. You can choose whatever color you want. It's honestly up to you. Um, and so I'm gonna hit okay. And then put this in the lighten blend mode. And as you can see, that adds that matte effect. Um, so you can lower the opacity right from here and just adjust how much of that is actually applied to your photo. Um, alternatively, you could also double click that thumbnail where we chose the color and you can play around with different shades or different colors. If you wanted to add a little bit of redness to the shadows on your black and white effect, you can. Um, in this case, I don't really want to. I probably would have not added the matte effect over it at all since it was already sort of there. Um, but again, you just click around in here and you can have fun playing around. If you like yours hazier, you can go a little higher up towards the white section. Um, yeah, if you wanted to add a sepia tone effect, I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but um, I know it was really popular back in the day. You can sort of add like a brownish tint um, over your photo and sort of give it that type of effect. Uh, or you can just stick with um, the grayish tone just to give you that matte without adding some color. Um, and then again, like I said, you can adjust the opacity from there. So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me at morgan at morganburks.com. And you can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash morganburksphotography. Thank you again for watching. Have a great day.